Hi, my name is Rob Scott from UC Today News and welcome to our June Microsoft Teams news update. Today I'm joined by Microsoft uh, Certified Master and MVP, Tom Abuthnot. Welcome, Tom. How's it going? Yeah, really good, Rob. Thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm very good. Thank you. Uh, in a slightly different location today, working from a uh, remote location in Spain. But uh, So you have to forgive me. I, this is not my usual setup, but I uh, hope you can see and hear me okay. Yeah, if, if any if anybody should work to it, be able to work from anywhere, it's us, right? So uh, got to keep it going. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, good to see you, Tom. And um, I know it's been a, a busy few weeks in the Microsoft world. So let's uh, dive into this month's news update. I mean, what's top of the list for you? I think you said we'd kind of focus on Microsoft Build to start with. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so Microsoft Build happened um, just at the end of uh, last month. And it's it's a developer show. So it's the whole of Microsoft stack. Uh, and it's mainly aimed at developers, but it's interesting for us to take a look at in the Teams and collaboration space because obviously those worlds are very integrated. Microsoft want Teams to be seen as a platform for app developers, for app integration. Uh, so there was some news really relevant for Microsoft Teams, and the first one is uh, Teams Live Share. Uh, I'm not sure about the, the marketing name. We've got so many lives and so many shares, but what, what this really is is tight application integration in a sharing scenario. So rather than what you do today, typically, which is if you're collaborating on an app, someone will screen share it and maybe you'll give code control. Maybe you won't. Um, this is the app being more built into the meeting experience. So uh, examples were given of like doing a, a CAD design together and the app literally surfaces in the meeting pane and it's a fully interactive app experience for every attendee so it's not the lag of screen sharing like the app is rendering for each attendee basically um, another one was live learning together so you can stream video through this but you can also have interactivity on the video so you can have a group training scenario where everybody can interact with the application for example uh, which is quite interesting kind of reimagining how how we work together whereas we've lived in this screen share world for so long if you start from scratch how would you do it you probably wouldn't just have one person sharing a screen so that's interesting so if, if i'm reading you right this is kind of embedding microsoft teams capabilities into you maybe a third-party application yeah that, you know and powering the collaboration using microsoft well, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of two ways, actually. So, so one is, and Microsoft have both options open to app developers. So one is you have an app and you can bring Teams components into your app. Um, so in that scenario, they use things like, uh, the Jira development ticketing system where you can bring Teams chat directly into that app. But in this scenario, it's bringing the app into the Teams meeting experience. So it's a Teams UI for meetings, but the meeting stage becomes an interactive design app or an interactive training experience. So just giving every attendee the, the, the first party app experience, but you're all collaborating at the same time. Got it, that's an interesting one. What's next on your list? Uh, so next one is uh, loop components. We talked about this in the past. These are Microsoft's kind of highly interactive, um, collaborative co-editing experience, very similar to Notion if anybody uses Notion. So the idea is you can have a, an embedded uh, table, like an Excel type table, but everybody can edit at the same time and everybody sees updates live. They're bringing that ability into adaptive cards, which is Microsoft's name for um, cards in chat that have interactive buttons and links and things. Um, and this is just a nice touch because it will mean that you can have the same interactive experience on those cards across Teams and Outlook. So things like uh, dynamic meeting agendas you can all collaborate on together or um, interactive polls or voting can all render at the same time for different users both across teams and outlook very nice uh, next up we said we talk about in-app purchasing and licensing and and also license management what's what's new there yeah, so so uh, yeah, e eagle-eyed uh, listeners or viewers will know we've talked about this a few times. Microsoft have talked about App Store and app purchasing a lot in Teams, uh, and a lot of it's starting to actually become real, real now. So the the App Store is generally available. You can buy apps through the App Store, so through Microsoft Teams App Store. Um, but but more than that now as well, they've added in license management. So if you're an admin or a team leader and you're going to buy 20 of an app for a team's users you now have the ability to assign those licenses which obviously makes sense right if you're going to buy through that store you need to assign them deassign them as people change roles and things so microsoft are just refining that experience but this is another testament to 
Microsoft pushing hard for Teams as a platform. It has its own dedicated app store where third parties can you know actually make revenue out of their apps, which is a big thing for third parties, obviously. Yeah, and that's really interesting. And, uh, you have a good move to to obviously allow organisations to manage those licences properly because I can, I can imagine if you haven't got that, you know, you either go into a third party platform or it's going to get a bit messy. So, uh, yeah, a nice feature there. Yeah. And then um, last one on the build stuff was um, actually, uh, again, a bit of a mouthful, collaborative controls in Power Apps. But what this means is you can take the Teams components like chats, meetings, files, even tasks from Planner and build them into your own Power Platform Power Apps. So again, this is the two worlds colliding. Microsoft talk about kind of their dynamics and Power Platform cloud and their M365 cloud. But in, in reality, those lines are blurring quite a lot. And, and to Microsoft's benefit in the collaboration space, they have this whole Power Platform where you can build your line of business apps. So those worlds are getting even closer where a Power Platform developer can now embed chat meeting experiences directly into their Power App all Microsoft you know, back end, but it just makes it really slick for them to build quite a good app chat experience in their own Power Platform app. Very nice. And as you say, a, a real commitment from Microsoft to continue to build out that, that you know, Teams as a platform uh, vision. So, you know, in terms of, uh, I think that's about it for Microsoft Build, but I said, you know, there are quite a few updates from Microsoft as well in the last few weeks. What's, what's, what's top of your list this month? Yeah, so moving more to kind of our, our classic IT Pro team stuff. So the first one, and it's quite a funny one, is Microsoft Teams is finally available in the, the Windows Microsoft Store. Um, so kind of like this is the Teams client. Now, obviously, if you don't follow this space closely, you would expect Microsoft's own apps to be available in their own app store. Um, the, the history here is because Microsoft Teams client is currently made on a, a technology called Electron, and it's a, a Win32 app, it didn't meet the criteria to be in Microsoft's app store. Um, Microsoft has changed that criteria so you can package Win32 Electron apps in their own store. Uh, so it's exactly the same Teams client. This is not the Teams uh, 2.0 quote unquote client, the new gen client. It's just the standard Teams client, but it is now available through the store, which does help some admins in terms of pushing it out and managing it and updating it. Uh, so not not the big news we're excited about, which is the, the new client coming. Um, so the Teams consumer client we have today, there will be an enterprise or work school version of that coming, but this is just a kind of a precursor to that, that the, the existing Teams app is available in the App Store. Yeah, thanks for providing some background on that, because when I saw that update come through, I was like, what, what does that mean? <laughs> why, why has this happened? But, yeah, uh, yeah it, was, for... it, it, made really, it made really big news, and I was like, well, it's not like it's not big news, it's just interesting. But I think it's it's always been confusing, that for, particularly in places like uh education where they try and lock down to the app store for example like not having the teams app in there was just confusing fantastic well next up we said we talk about together mode uh specifically together mode for everyone which kind of sounds a bit again a little bit strange um but you know tell us more about together mode for everyone yeah i mean this is so together mode for for recap for people is the ability to place people in a virtual scene and have a certain layout so you can have a virtual room where you all look like you're collaborating together uh rows of desks for kind of amphitheater type scenario uh, this is the ability for a presenter to kick that mode on for everybody so rather than it's kind of fumbly at the moment if you're trying to set the scene up for a whole bunch of people like a you know, classroom scenario you have to tell each student to click the three dots, turn on together mode. So now a presenter can kick it on for everybody. Um, I, I'm not seeing massive use of together mode in, in the wild. In, I, mean, I mostly work with enterprise customers, so maybe it's different in, in edu or other verticals. Um, but I, this will at least make it a little bit slicker to invoke that experience for everybody in the meeting. Yeah, so together mode is finally for, for everyone. Uh, but I like the um, the fact that you can now control that centrally because uh, I can imagine, yeah, having to tell everyone to do, you know, to activate together mode is a bit of a pain. But if you're not seeing a great uptake in the usage of together mode either, then, you know, maybe, 
you know, maybe maybe that might, you know this new feature may improve that it, uh, that uptake. Possibly. It might do. You could set up a very specific meeting scenario. And you could have your own layout, and you can kick it on so when people join, they drop directly into that experience. So uh, we'll see if this makes a difference. I'm going to keep an eye on it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely slicker than it was before. Yeah. Great stuff. Well, next up, we said we'd talk about direct ge- uh, direct guest join for Microsoft Teams rooms on Android. Yeah, this is, um, uh, again, one of the, the background scenarios here is we have two types of Microsoft Teams rooms. We have the Windows-based ones and the Android-based ones. Um, and the Microsoft's goal is to keep them in feature parity, so same experience on both. Um, but there are some gaps. And one of the gaps was the ability to direct guest join, which is the marketing name for joining third party meetings so in, in this case it's zoom uh from the microsoft teams room so if you're in a microsoft teams room but you're invited to a third party making ecosystem meeting like zoom you can now from those android devices click and join that in a kind of native experience way nice so again a, a, a nice uh issue being addressed there or gap in the in, in the experience being uh, sorted out by Microsoft. Great stuff. So next up, we said we'll talk about VDI because uh, there's been a whole bunch of updates around VDI this month. Yeah, there's been a massive amount of updates. So VDI is fairly niche, uh, a niche experience, but lots of legal companies use it, lots of pro services companies use it. And in, in the Skype for business world, it was always very kind of a bit of a second class experience. Now, there's some technical challenges to VDI that make it harder to do things. Um, but we got a whole bunch of updates. So we got multi window support. So the ability to pop out meetings, for example. Uh, we got, uh, give and take control for VDI on Citrix background blur on VDI, and most importantly, dynamic emergency calling. So when you're working from home, uh, teams can understand where you are physically for emergency calling, which is a, a, a compliance and legal requirement in, in a lot of US states. So it's uh, it's nice to see that even though that is a, a niche of the enterprise space, Microsoft are continuing to push for more features on, on the VDI experience. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, good, good, good move for Microsoft. Um, next up, we said to talk about uh, new Teams Rooms Technical Solution Professional Exam. Tell us more on that. Yeah, so Microsoft, are, this is interesting. Um, I, I do quite a lot of work with Microsoft around the exam stuff, and, and they have their formal classroom exams kind of managed by Pearson. Either you know you go to an in-person center and pass them, or you do a remote um, exam, but it's all propped over webcam. But then they have this other track of exams, and this is this it falls into the other track where they're kind of more aimed at partners to become experts. So it's online training, online exam. And this is the latest one. It's the Teams Room Technical Solutions Professional. Um, so I know that the, the guys who put this content together and it's really, really good content. And the benefit here is that this stuff moves a lot faster than the formal traditional exam process. So um, you can just jump online, work through the, uh, the um, content, do the exam online and you get a nice LinkedIn certificate. Um, we put a link in the in the show notes to it. But if you're in the space where you're either a consultant or even an end end IT person who's in the Microsoft Teams room space, you can run through this exam and, and get your certification, which I think is really, really useful. And it's all free as well. Yeah, great resource. Yeah, we'll put a link in the description, as Tom says, on that one. Uh, and, and certainly you know, have a look at that. Uh, and last on our Microsoft uh, you know, Teams updates, uh, we are going to talk a little bit more about uh, devices and, and ACS, but just in terms of software, we said we talk about uh, the multilingual uh, support for suggested replies, Tom. I, I found this quite cool. Yeah, this is really, really useful. We've had this on uh, LinkedIn for the longest time. So it's uh, it, LinkedIn tries to understand what you're likely to reply and give you a few options to one-click reply. That then came to Microsoft Teams, but first mobile, then desktop. And now they're adding multilingual support. So it will have suggested replies in your appropriate local language. Uh, yeah, really, really useful feature. And nice, again, to see Microsoft completing the story beyond just kind of US English, which is where everything starts. Yeah, I really like the suggested replies feature. I, I love it. And, and obviously, making that more accessible to other people in other languages is, is even more fantastic. But uh, certainly a great one for productivity and just convenience, I think, more than anything. So, do, do, you, do you think yeah, we're going to get, do you think we're going to get to the point where the suggested replies are just talking to each other and the AI takes care of the whole conversation? <laughs> More than likely, but that, that means more time for me to do other things. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. But, you know, organising meetings, I think, would be a good one as well. Just yeah. to be able to get. I, I know there's bots out there that that, that link, you know, connect with Microsoft Teams. 
um, uh, that can do that for you, but I'm, not, I'm just not sure how effective they are just yet, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Right, okay, next up we said we'll talk about ACS, so um, Advanced Communication Services. Uh, Tom, what's top of your list this month? Yeah, so, so ACS is the underlying platform for Microsoft Teams, but as a service. So this is kind of your, your Twilio type competitor. Uh, and interestingly, ACS was always communication spaces in media, um, chat and, and video, um, and Microsoft have now added email to that. So uh, a fairly retro communications use case, but something that most apps need some ability to send and receive emails. So rather than going to a third party like SendGrid is the, the most common one, you can now as a developer leverage ACS to send emails to your end users. Mm, and who owns, who owns send, SendGrid? Uh, SendGrid actually got bought, I think, by Twilio um, relatively oh, recently. So that that would be just looking at the date. Um, but that so it's interesting. One isn't it? We're seeing Microsoft and Twilio becoming even more, you know, kind of head to head competitors. Yeah, I think Microsoft and Twilio uh, have been around in the kind of uh, CPAS space a lot longer and, and have a, a, a wider story. But Microsoft have this secret power of being tied into ACS and Teams and everything else. So they're really leveraging that as much as they can. Yeah, I can see that's uh, certainly growing in uh, in tempo in, the, in, in that space. So um, next up, we said we talk about virtual visits, uh, sample app. What's that? Yeah, so this is, this is a good example of uh, ACS in action. So Microsoft have published a fully open source sample application for um, the kind of uh, B2C type scenario, doctor to patient, um, bank uh, customer to banker type scenario where the the customer experience is in the browser via um, ACS and the the doctor or the banker experience is on Teams. Uh, and Microsoft are really keen to get that experience going in customers. So they just give this fully open source example app that you can customize. Uh, and it, it's a good example of the, the power of what you can do relatively quickly with ACS to get a full multimedia app experience going. Yeah, that's great. Obviously, uh, you know, providing those use cases and those examples uh, and even the code is fantastic, as you say, uh, really kind of shining a light on ACS now, aren't they? And in terms of, you know, um, I mean, are you seeing kind of the, you know, the awareness of ACS increasing now? Are you seeing customers use it? Yeah, it's definitely ticking up. It's getting um, developers into it is the, is the biggest challenge. So it's all about line of business applications and third parties. Uh, one of the biggest use cases is LinkedIn, which is obviously a, a Microsoft subsidiary. So it's kind of owned by Microsoft, but they're using ACS for all their meetings online between LinkedIn users. So Microsoft wants to see much more of that where it's integrated into retail scenarios, line of business banking, uh, but healthcare is where it's been most popular. Hence virtual business is mainly a healthcare based scenario, um, particularly obviously accelerated through the pandemic suddenly everybody needed virtual meetings that were secure and compliant so acs did quite well there yeah interesting yeah great and in terms of uh, last update on acs um phone numbers uh from azure uh tom there's a bit of an update there yeah so 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 one of the key things around uh, acs is being able to bring in psdn phone numbers so you can do that via direct routing so you can bring a third party operator's phone numbers into ACS today. Uh, and that's done very commonly. Um, but Microsoft have had really limited first party number capacity. So it was US and uh, UK. And Microsoft have now added Canada, Ireland, Italy, and Sweden to that list. So still well below the, the number of numbers you can get on the team side. Microsoft are working hard to unblock more first party numbers. But because of the consumption-based way you pay, all the legal and compliance requirements are very, very different to bring them to ACS than to Teams. So it's a little bit of a slow go. Um, but nice to see now you've got Canada, Ireland, Italy, Sweden in there. And if you need more numbers, you can either um, add direct routing as well, or you can go direct routing and have any country, basically. Got it. I was going to ask, if, is there a workaround? So direct routing would be that? Yep, that yeah, yeah, and that's the way most people are going for for different countries around the world, or to integrate into their existing phone system or their existing telco. Um, but some developers just want the the complete first party option, so that's there too. Yeah, 
Fantastic. Okay, well, let's move on to devices because there's a few uh, updates on devices, a few new certified devices. Um, yeah, tell us more on that one. Yeah, there's some nice, nice gear that's been certified recently. Um, top of the list is the Logitech Zone uh, wireless earbuds, uh, and these are cool because the the kind of wireless earbud experience is something that a lot of people want. Obviously, AirPods are the the leading brand in that consumer space of of wireless headphones but they're not a proper team certified solution. Uh, and Logitech many years back actually had wired buds, um, which were popular, but were not, not the, um, not the best experience in terms of users, but this is a proper wireless solution. So wireless earbuds, but with all the hybrid ANC and, and enterprise experience in terms of updates and stuff that you would expect. So I, I expect these to be quite popular with, particularly with mobile workers, um, cause you've got the nice wireless earbud experience, but also the certified standards. Can I ask you a question on this one, Tom? I mean, you, you speak to a lot of enterprises. I mean, are all organ- organizations kind of, uh, you know, buying earbuds, are they looking to invest in earbuds for their UC users or is it kind of bring your own bud? out there at the moment what, what's the kind of state of play yeah so, so earbuds haven't typically been an offered option because there's nothing certified or enterprise in, in, in that space i mean the jabra have had good good ones for quite a while so they'd be the exception where they they've i know had some good uh experience with wireless earbuds and dongles um but there hasn't been a lot of options uh what Vendors, uh, sorry, what enterprises try and do is have a few certified vendors to choose from. So uh, I, I think with now Jabra and uh, Logitech being in the mix, they're more likely to have that in their catalogue of supported solutions. I know on the user side, uh, I see, because I look at the data, I see a lot of users using AirPods um, very often because it's a favoured consumer. So they're not, not certified or approved, but people use them anyway. So hopefully this will displace some of that use. Yeah, interesting. What's next on the list? Yeah, so Huddly, uh, who do really interesting kind of AI-driven cameras, um, have a new kind of large and medium room camera, um, which is a, a high-res uh, camera, but also has all the kind of uh, people tracking stuff you'd expect from Huddly. So that's the Huddly L1. Uh, so that's a pretty interesting camera, and you can mix and match that into any of the, the Windows Teams room systems. Uh, you've got... Yamaha have a, a new tabletop mic solution, uh, a Dekia. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and, and this is uh, a good example of uh, more high end uh, room system experiences being integrated tightly into Microsoft Teams. And, and along those lines, Shure's digital signal processor is now certified uh, on the, the Lenovo ThinkSmart Core. So that means you can install their digital uh, signal processor, their audio mixer type software directly onto the Microsoft Teams room and then connect their uh, high end uh, room mic and speakers and, and amps and all the kind of clever technology without needing a third party uh, box to do that. So you're seeing these proper high end audio brands getting more and more integrated into the Microsoft Teams room meeting space as well. Yeah, fantastic. The, the hardware portfolio just continues to increase in size, doesn't it? Certainly from a cert- certified point of view, and then let alone the non-certified products out there. It's, yeah. it's great to see lots of choice out there for customers. Yeah, it's, it's good to see that it's getting you know, the, 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 the high-end brands like Shure are in the mix. So it's not just your kind of small, medium meeting room. You can kit out the the proper exec boardroom, the theatre type scenarios with all this, you know, third party managed audio processing. You can stretch Teams rooms to any space now, not just the kind of small and medium space. Yeah, it's great to see. OK, well, that's it from our updates point of view. We're just going to plug a couple of events and those events sound very similar, but are two very different events uh, in, in a way geographically. Uh, Tom, tell us uh, more about Commsverse and Comms V next. Yeah, so yeah, so you say they're kind of an almost sister events. Everybody knows everybody in this space. So Commsverse is in the UK. It's the 29th and 30th at Mercedes-Benz World, uh, and that is a Teams-focused event. 
Uh, it's a pay ticket event, uh, very, very well done in kind of, you know, kind of the, the level of the speakers and attendees and sponsors and, and food and drinks and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I highly recommend that one and I'll be talking about that one as well. And then closely followed by Coms V Next, which is in Denver, Colorado. And it's a similar type of scenario run by uh, a bunch of very good MVPs, um, very technical, very teams focused. Again, that's the two day event, uh, August 16th and 17th. And, and I'll be at that one too. So looking forward to two kind of high end teams events almost back to back. Yeah, really, really great events. Um, so certainly we'll put some links in the description to those events. Do register for those. If you can get there, uh, then certainly uh, it, it won't be uh, a disappointment. They are great, you know, very well-established Microsoft Teams events now. So super. Well, uh, Tom, that's it from us. Um, uh, you know, thank you for so much for uh, joining me today and for uh, sharing this month's update. Yeah, no problem. Busy, busy month this month. So uh, we'll, we'll see what July brings us next month. Absolutely. And if you've enjoyed today's session, uh, please do give this session uh, you know, a quick like or share on social. It's always appreciated. And if you want to join the conversation, you can connect with Tom or myself on uh, LinkedIn or Twitter. And our links, uh, you know, our links are equally in the description. I'm Rob Scott from UC Today. Thanks for watching. <laughs>